entities. What's all about preventive maintenance? How do we understand when somebody talks about preventive maintenance? There are two criteria when you are uh, troubleshooting problems related with computers. Number one, it is preventive maintenance. And what we shall see as we move on, it is what they call corrective maintenance. Preventive maintenance, you try to prevent something from occurring, something from happening, okay? You try to avoid something from, you know, uh, happening to your machine by keeping it clean, by keeping dust out of the machine. All these are what we try to refer to as preventive maintenance. Is what simply we are going to try and share today, okay? Uh, uh, I just wanted to advise that when we are in class, for those people who could always manage data, there is no need to fear to always put on your videos. It makes uh, the live interaction so live. So for those one, I want to communicate starting from today's class and the upcoming classes that let us feel comfortable to always put on our video for those people who may not feel offended so that we make it more organized in, in such a way that we are not having a hide, a hide system uh, from the reality. Because why they put on the video it is to make sure that we can see one another and feel comfortable and that's why I always try to manage that I put on the video uh, so that you feel comfortable, you feel secure to even communicate with me. So that is my humble request, but for those who can't manage, you can always switch it off. But for professionalism, it is always advised that you need to be comfortable uh, to be in control of even your class. Okay, so even if you don't want to be in peace, people to see your fake background, uh, your fake room, you can just simply go and then put a virtual background and then you'll be in position to avoid it, okay? So uh, that is my humble request to the rest of the members in this class that uh, next time, if you can manage to get, you can manage to get MBs, always put on the videos and then we enjoy our class. Thank you very much about that. And I want to appreciate those one who have managed to switch it on, but there is no marks for that. <laughs> but my, it is just a, a request that uh, we enjoy a class as we can see one another. Okay, now, what are some of the sections that we are going to be trying to talk about? Our class is going to be a little bit short. Uh, I want to always be breaking them so that uh, we understand the concept to we'll move on and then we we'll do other things. Okay, so preventive maintenance, that is the core thing that we are going to share. And then the process that as a technician that you go through to troubleshoot a PC related problem or a laptop related problem. What are the steps that you can take when you are solving a problem? So it is always pertinent to understand the steps. So those are the things that we are going to be sharing quickly today. So there are a lot of benefits whenever we do preventive maintenance dear students. They are all two here, okay? So to develop a preventive maintenance plan are developed based on two factors. Number one, the computer location and the computer usage. Computer location, what we are talking about in simple terms, where are you using your, where are you, where is your computer located? Is if I'm on fourth floor, that means my computer is located up and anything can danger it, okay? So where is your computer located? Is it located uh, like in the city? Because you know the issues with the city altogether. 
Is your computer located on the, on the, on the roadside where you're working from? Okay, so all these things are very pertinent when you are doing preventive maintenance. That if your computer is always located near different sites, construction sites, that means they are going to accumulate a lot of dust, and that means you need to have daily or routine check up on your computer to avoid a lot of dust going onto it. Another concern, it is about the computer usage. Okay, like a computer used for, for, for classes, okay, it may be demanding a lot. An IT person using a computer demands a lot of things every time you are going to be working on it, okay? So it is very important to understand where the computer is used from, okay? So these are all pertinent issues when you are doing preventive maintenance. Is it always on the network? That means it is always, uh, you know, attracting a lot of, you know, dangers from the intruders, from the hackers. All those are necessary checkups. So there are two best factors. One, it is the location, where the computer is located. Is it in the market? Okay, you're using your computer at your station. Eh? Okay, so all these are pertinent issues that we need to understand. Now, like uh, my brother Nigise, you will find that you always your computer, you may be using it at the station. At the station, everybody touches on your laptop. So these are all pertinent issues that how occasionally are you going to be using it? How occasionally are you going to be troubleshooting your computer? Uh, just a moment. Okay, I'm seeing people are typing, that's good. Uh, then we talked about establish the theory of possible cause. These are the ways that you can establish them. You may try to check the machine, okay? In order to establish, you remove power and then check if the power can let you go on. Then test the theory. The theory that means test what you thought that may be the cause of the problem. You may test it by ensuring the power, the device is powered on, ensure that the power switch for the outlet is turned on. These are all ways when you are testing. Verify the boot order in BIOS setting. Boot order means that when the machine starts, it says through the hard disk, not through your flash, you have ever tried it when you put in your flash in the laptop, and when you start your machine, it just refuses. It gives you a black screen because you left a CD inside or you left a flash inside. When the machine was off, so when you start, you find that it refuses to start. So if a client calls you that, my machine has totally failed to start, you tell him, do you have a CD inside? You left a movie CD inside? Then you may check, if once he removes the CD, the machine goes back to normal. Why? Because the boot sequence was looping to the CD which is inside. And the CD which is inside is lacking the operating system. Or it is looping through the, uh, the, your external drive, drive that you have put. And whenever it starts, it just goes to the flash disk. And that's why you end up having a black screen and the machine is not starting. So to avoid it, we just quickly try to find out uh, and remove that gadget. So establish a plan. Okay, those are all plans. Verify by restarting the machine, 
reboot the machine and start it. If you find that it is working very well, after ensuring multiple application, you find check all the application, you find that it works very well, verify the network, and you find that the network is working very well. Ensure all the attached devices are working properly. Ensure no error messages are being received again. That is the verification that we're talking about. And after that verification, what we are the reason that we gave out when we are doing documentation, it is to be in position that when you receive the same problem, you can provide the same solution if it comes. Okay, so it is very wonderful to understand that process very well. Okay, when I look at my brother, what they are sharing here, you can even try to uh, find it in your chat room. Okay, that is very important. Members, you come up, Yasir uh, Mugisha, that is so wonderful, but you need to, uh, in your free time, document for me and then forward it to me. Uh, for, uh, you submit it on, on the WhatsApp group, our WhatsApp group. Once I recommend them, then people can, uh, you know, keep those information. That, that is wonderful. One beep means refresh, ref, refresh failure. Okay, that is a refresh failure that the machine uh, starting has some few problems. Then two beeps, you replace the memory or troubleshoot the motherboard. Okay, so you have troubles on the motherboard. So you receive two beeps, two, two, then that means the trouble is coming from the memory, uh, the, the RAM that which was inserted or it was not inserted properly. So those are the few concerns that you may find. Okay, I'm seeing Akram, you have one a hand. Okay, can you come on board? Assalamu <laughs> alaikum. Uh, master, I'm asking, uh, there is a laptop that we put, but it couldn't produce any sound. Maybe it was, it, it, uh, it didn't have a sound card. How can you tell? Okay, that is so wonderful. How can you How... tell the problem? Okay, uh, no, but to tell the problem, because here, the problem of the laptop, we don't have the laptop as of yet. But if the laptop lacks sound drivers they, and it is fair to start, but if it is starting, you can update the sound drivers. Okay, you can update them online and then update the sound drivers of that particular machine. So you can just simply update the sound drivers. But if the machine has totally failed to start, then automatically we can now start checking on the charger system because we are talking about a laptop. A laptop is using a battery. So try to check its battery. You may remove the battery and then connect it directly without a battery. And if it fails to start, then you may, think, you may try to check on the power system. So this one they do happen when you are checking the machine physically. I'm saying all this because I have ever witnessed them but depends on you may, your explanation that the machine was behaving this way. How could you tell the problem? If it has sound problem, you can't tell the problem. You can only tell by observing how the machine is, is behaving. Or it may give you even a message on the screen. So if it gives a message on the screen, you can based on that message. There are error messages that you may also get, okay? There are error messages. That assignment, I'm going to give it to uh, Teddy. Please, the, Teddy, work on what type of error messages that you may get, and then you understand, because there are those error codes that you may get, and then it shows you that the problem is coming from the RAM, okay? Like any error message which starts from three, and some codes, that is automatically designated from the RAM. Please steady work on that, and then you will submit it in, in our WhatsApp group. And I look at what type of error messages and what can be causing that error message to happen. So you can give us the types of error messages. That is your simple uh, assignment that you can work on. Let me note your name. 
Madam Teddy, you work on that. You can also work with Sophia. Sophia, please, you can work with Teddy. You submit for us what are some of the possible uh, what are some of the possible error codes that you may get? Those related error codes. Okay, Sophia, please uh, you work with Teddy and then you will produce for us those indicators. You submit them in our group before we meet next week, inshallah. Okay, so uh, there are some common problems. These are some of the common problems. They are students, storage device may produce different problems, okay? Storage device problems are often related to loose or incorrect cable connection. You have not connected the cables. If you remember when I was doing uh, uh, assembling, there are those cables that you connect on the motherboard. So if the motherboard or during the transportation of those, the, your machine, the cables became a little bit looser, automatically you find out that on your screen, the machine is saying that you are lacking a hard disk. That is a software related problem. Uh, sorry, hardware related problem. And because you have loose in the connectivities. And so you check the connectivity of your gadget, motherboard or internal components. These are some of the problems that we always you find, but the problem may be caused by very failed component. Okay, a component has failed to work completely, or incorrect drivers that you have installed on the machine. You find out that the sound drivers are not working, and then you get into problems. Please, uh, dear students, you mark what Saddam has said if you check on the on our chat room. He has indicated them very well, which is so good. So please, you can check and then try to use up to eight beeps. Eight beeps indicates that the display memory failure or display memory has totally failed to respond. So these are some of the problems, power problems, UPC problems, or display problems and what could be causing them, okay? Most of the causes when it is a hardware related problems, we find that it is loose in connectivities or incorrect drivers which have been given to them. So it is very important to understand what type of drivers are you giving it. And then these are common problems and their solutions you'll get time and read through them, okay? The computer does not recognize the storage device. What will you do, okay? The computer does not recognize an optical disk. What are you supposed to check? The computer will not eject the optical CD. I think you have ever witnessed that, that you have placed the CD inside and the CD has refused to move out. So what are you going to do, okay? Will you just throw away the machine? Okay, the CD has totally refused. So what will you do? Members, what can you do? Oh, for those people who have ever done it, the CD refuses to come out of your laptop. What do you do? Can somebody tell us? Members, open, yes, you are saying open the CD drive and carefully 
But the CD is refusing to open. The CD driver has refused to open. Use a screwdriver. <laughs> no. Ah, I, yeah, I think yeah, restart the computer. You no, you again. I have restarted, and then he's still refusing. It has refused. The CD is still inside. It has refused. Okay, Akram. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yes. yes. What? Yes. What will you do? Akram, I'm not getting you well. Akram, your internet needs to go to Nabanja. Please yes. you don't. Okay, Kivirige, what are you saying? Kivirige is saying it happened once and I softly tapped. <laughs> wow, members, you can see Kimirige's solution. He tapped on the on the laptop, and the laptop he throw uh, he had to throw away the CD. Okay, uh huh. Senpai, yeah, senpai. Okay, can you come on board, sir? And you tell uh, us. It once happened to me and I opened the computer manually, then I removed the CD myself. We, we want to understand how you did it manually. I had to get the screws off the, the case, then I accessed mm -hmm. the inner of the, of the PC, Allah, then I had to remove guy. my CD. <laughs> so for you, you had a chance of not breaking the CD-ROM drive, because the CD-ROM has that plate. So yes. that place, how you just had to find a way of squeezing it. No, I, I opened it. Okay, thank you. Um, let me look at uh, uh, some of the people are saying that you go to the CD, go with the CD then, you double click. No, Saddam, even if you double click my brother, it has refused. Omar is saying, we try making, we try, making use of the eject. No, it has refused. Even if you use the eject options. Abdurrahman, you try and see whether there is another. Uh -uh. <laughs> OK, then Jamir, Jamir, you get an OK. Jamir, you get. Please, can, can you try to understand Jamiru's way? You get a small penny. Insert it in the small hole near the CD-ROM switch. Members, what, that is the possible solution. And uh, Jamir, you have got five marks for that, OK? Because that will be the possible solution to, to make sure that it comes out well, well, OK? Thank you very much. You try to get you, that small pin. There is a hole on the CD-ROM plate which cover or uh, the cover, just try to eject it a little bit and then it will open out together. So that's the way it will open. So Jamil, please your five marks will be on the ERP, inshallah. You remind me if I don't put it by today because I don't want to get your marks. So that is so wonderful. Members learn from this. And that's why I say that troubleshooting, it needs, skill and that skill needs always to be you know tried out through this kind of you know talk that we are having in our class okay thank you very much uh, for what you have shared and then we shall always appreciate uh, people's uh, you know interaction then okay the computer does not recognize a removable or ex external drive okay if your computer has totally failed to recognize a removable drive, like your flash, okay? Try to look for the drivers. You try to look for the drivers of that particular, of that particular gadget, okay? So that's the way we can be in position. Retrieving or saving data from the flash is very slow. So how will you do it if the retrieval or saving data from the flash is very slow. That means you need to increase the capacity of your RAM 
so that it can speed up or remove some of the content that you have on your machine. So it is very important to always consider all that. Okay, Sophia, what are you saying? Sophia, she's asking for pardon about the other concern. What we do, we get a small pin, like for you ladies, you have your pinnies that you use when you are covering yourself. Okay, so use that capini on the CD if you have your laptop. So if you, if you have a laptop at home, you're going to check that when you're opening your CD, there's a small hole closer to that CD opener. So if you there is a CD inside and you want to open and it has failed to open, just use your pin, push it a little bit in that hole, then you are going to see the, your, uh, your, the, the, the CD-ROM opening a little bit, and then you can pull your CD. So that's the way you can do it. I think you have understood it. And if you have understood, please feel free. You can put it in the chat that you have understood, and then we move on. So members, these are all possible problems that we get. You get time and read through them. The computer will not turn on. The computer has completely refused to turn on. Okay, so if the computer completely refuses to turn on, where do you check? Members, where do you check if the computer has completely refused to turn on and you want to troubleshoot? The computer is not turning on. So what will you do as a technician? Can we put it in the chat? What will you do if the computer completely refuses to start? Okay, I'm waiting for the first person to respond. I'm only waiting for two people to respond via the chat. If the computer refuses to complete a start, you check the power supply. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm waiting for only the three people and uh, those three people, they are getting their five marks. Even if you now they are over. Okay, I'm seeing Abdullah. I'm seeing Abdurrahman. Automatically when the computer completed. Now, what if it is a laptop? What are you going to do? It completely refuses to start. What will you do if it is a computer? If it is a laptop, your laptop computer refuses to start. Okay, you check the battery. Isaac, I've seen. You check the battery. That is good. Thank you very much. Your five marks have been recorded. For those people, you know, you need to be very fast in my class. Okay, five marks for that because we have started the troubleshooting. Many questions are going to be starting, starting to next week that I'll be asking questions of related to that. Okay, okay, Mugisha, you are saying that you remove the battery, unplug the child, uh, the, okay, and check if it works. That is so very, okay, that is very beautiful the way you have explained. They try to go through those steps and then be, the computer has refused to start completely. So how would you go through it? So thank you very much for those one who have tried to give us the possible solutions about it. That's the way we go through problems, okay? And dear students, uh, identifying problems, dealing with them, it's always very important, okay? So it is always good to note make notes of the impossible problems that we get in life. It makes us to always remember the history of repair. It makes a detailed list of problems and repairs of what problems that you have ever encountered. Another tool that you can use, it is your internet reference tools. The other one, it is personal reference tools like your friends here. As you have heard, you may find that Akram has understood a certain way of solving a problem and he has ever solved it in the working field. Then it becomes very easy to always ask. And then you can also use the internet. Internet has a lot of information. You can use internet search engines, groups, okay, manufacturers, frequent asked questions. You can also use those one online computer manual, online forums where people have already answered what you what. There is no problem 
unless the computer has been manufactured uh, within a second, there's no problem that you are going to face in the world about computers and you don't find a solution. So the only way to solve them, it is to try your level best that whenever you get a problem, just go on internet, make sure that you know the make or the type of machine that you are solving. So if you are using ESA, what type of ESA machine are you talking about? Because also ESA, they do have different types. If you're talking about Dell machines, type the right Dell machine that you're using with its version, because always the information is always written. Like for me, I'm using a computer called the Predator ESA, which is 300. So I just need to type Predator ESA 300. And then if my, my problem is about slow machine or blue, pre, or blue screen, or my, I want to see how to remove the process of that particular laptop, I will just put the particulars of that specific machine and for sure, I'll be in position to find out how somebody accessed the process of that laptop. And it is the same machine. So you can't fail to get the proceeding as long as you have understood what could be the problem. So there are students, as you wind up for today's class, I want to empower you to always sit down, try your level best and understand the things very well. There's no way that you can fail to go through all the hurdles, okay? So I want to thank you very much for having attended the class and trying our level best that uh, 